CBS presents this program in color. Ready. Now take three paces forward. Whirl and fire. One, two, three. reality because when you shook me took me out of my world i woke up suddenly i just woke up the happening when you find that you left your future behind because when you got a tender lover you don't take care of and then you better beware of the happening one day you're up then you turn around It happened to me, and it can happen to you. Ooh, and then it happened. Hey, ooh, and then it happened. Is it real? 
real? Is it fake? Is this game of love a mistake? Cause when I lost the love, I thought it was mine for certain. Suddenly thoughts hurt. Love happening. Too late. When that fickle finger of fate. Yeah, it came and broke my pretty balloon. I woke up. Suddenly I just woke up. Love happening. Cause when you got a tender love you don't take care of Then you better beware of the happening The happening Hey, the happening This is what's happening The happening One more time The happening Whoa! Away, we'll be back with wonderful Willie West from station W-I-N-O. Wonderful Wino. That's me. In a minute. <laughs> As are happening tonight, we present the wildest disc jockey in the country today, Willie West on Good Old Radio. Hi there, kids. Welcome to the Willie West Show here on Wonderful Wino Radio. Wonderful Wino. Welcome to the Willie West Show here in the West with the West of the best and Willie's the best and weird in the West. Winging your way with 101. Wild and Willie wedges of wax and crazy wackets to play right here on the radio. Right here on Wonderful Wino. Wonderful Wino. 1300 on your dial. Radio 13. Bad luck. <laughs> And now let's get started with the big rockin' sound, kids. This is one of the tunes that's been on the charts for two and a half years. It's just starting to make the big move this week. <laughs> Last week it was number 216. This week it's new hunt, number 205. It zooms straight up there to one of the big magic circle spots. Let's hear it right now. The peanut butter conspiracy. And your love sticks to the roof of my heart. <laughs> well, why do I cry? Well, why do I sigh? Well, why do I die? I don't know why. Yeah. Okay, kids, another big romantic ballad for you. And you heard it right here, right here on Wonderful Wino. Wonderful Wino. <laughs> Time now for a commercial, kids. Speaking of romance and romantic ballads, where are you going this weekend with that date of yours? Why not go on out to the Makeout Drive-In Theater, kids? <laughs> I think you're gonna like it out there. There's no lines, there's no waiting, there's no movie either. <laughs> no, of course, it's a great place to go for an evening. And one of the big features is there's no admission. We nailed you at the snack bar, kid. <laughs> And say, don't forget, each night is a fabulous cash prize of $50 given to anyone who can find the water fountain. Kids, come on out to the Makeout, the Makeout Drive-In Theater. Don't tell your parents where you are. Tell them you went to the movies, kid. <laughs> big, big teen flick to click for you tonight. A lot of big uh, flicks with a lot of your tunes in them. I know you're going to dig them. The Longest Day, Grand Prix, Cleopatra, Dr. Zhivago, Thoroughly Modern Millie, Lawrence of Arabia, and selected short movies as well. <laughs> Featuring Ben-Hur and Gone with the Wind. Don't forget, <laughs> the picture starts promptly at 7 and complete show ends in mid-August. You <laughs> want to miss the kids? Now listen, don't forget, the Makeout Drive-In Theater gives you the latest motion pictures and the oldest hot dogs in town. <laughs> the film on the screen is no comparison to the film on the glasses in our snack bar. <laughs> If you don't like the movies, kids, just turn up the speaker because we bugged the other car. <laughs> okay, back to music.
music here, Willie's the name. Yes, sir, Willie's the name. Music's my game. Got another one of the big sounds for you. I know you're gonna dig it. This is a tune that was recorded just this morning at 9 o'clock. By noontime, it was number 15. By 3.30, it was number one. And now, it's a golden oldie. <laughs> it's by the electric nostrils. Here it is. I wanted to take my baby to the dance. Well, I wanted to take my baby to the dance. Well, I wanted to take my baby to the dance. But the dance was over. One of the big romantic battles for you, kid. That's a hit right here. Your favorite station, the most unwonderful Rhino. Wonderful Rhino. Time now for the news. Another quickie divorce today. Rod and Sheila Quickie called it quits after a hectic six weeks marriage. By the way, Sheila was quoted as having said she was really upset she had given Rod the best weeks of her life. <laughs> Hubert Humphrey, word from Washington. Hubert Humphrey just has had minor surgery. He'll be soon back at his desk, wherever that may be. <laughs> Lady Bird and Linda Bird just gave President Johnson a canary. He doesn't know what to call it. <laughs> and Lurleen Wallace, the first lady governor, admits that her husband George does the cooking. <laughs> Lurleen is the only lady with a dove and a hawk in the kitchen. <laughs> well, that's what's happening, kids. We got it first right here on Wonderful Wino, Wonderful Wino. And now it's time to switch to our remote newsman, Bernie Remote in New York. Come in, Bernie. Good evening, remote lovers. We are about to interview Senator Robert Kennedy from the great state of New York. You know, Senator Kennedy has graciously consented to answer a few questions for us, and I believe he's coming right now. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for having me here. <laughs> Just like to say to my constituents, no matter what state they may now live in, <laughs> don't worry what you can do for me, I can take care of myself. <laughs> Senator, tell me, what is your opinion of uh, Governor Reagan? Are we on the air? Yes. <laughs> well, I give you my on the air opinion. <laughs> I think Governor Reagan is doing a good job to California. Uh, in California. Let me say this about that. Governor Reagan is doing a fine job, and I feel he is sincere. Because if Ronnie were acting, uh, he'd be doing a bad job. Uh, Senator, just call me president. Do you think that actors uh, should be in politics? Well, I don't see why not. Uh, after all, uh, what is a politician? A glib tongue? A flashy smile and a uh, hank of hair. Uh, president, call me king. Uh, what about your feud with uh, Mayor Yorty? Well, now that is ridiculous. Uh, I think Mayor Yorty is doing a fine job for Los Angeles every time he leaves. <laughs> Next question, why are they laughing? Senator, let me ask you, are you in a bad mood today? Well, how would you like to live with a woman who's always nauseous? <laughs> How do you feel about Teddy as a uh, potential presidential candidate? Uh, Teddy, uh, who? Your brother. <laughs> well, him, how can you trust him? He uh, stole my voice. <laughs> Starting to do my gestures. <laughs> Senator, is it true? Are you really going to run for the presidency? Well, yes. I mean, who's better qualified? I ski, I climb mountains, and, uh, I ride the rapids, play touch football. I have 10 kids. You don't think I've been doing all that for fun, do you? <laughs> To fight the unbeatable fight, <laughs> to beat the unbeatable fight. That was Senator Robert Kennedy, the Democrats' answer to Everett Dirksen. And now back to wonderful Willie West. Okay, thank you, Bernie, for another fine report. Sure, could wish we could have finished that song. Sound like it might be a big hit on the big chart soon. Okay, thank you, Bernie. We'll move right along now with more of the big sounds for you. Got some more of the tunes. Here's a song that isn't even on the charts yet because the group will actually be making it up as you hear it right now. 
It's one of the great new groups, the Nitty Gritty Mamas and Garfunkel. <laughs> and your face cleared up. <laughs> um, baby went away for a long, long time. She came home on a train. I said, hey, pretty baby, you sure look fine, but you just don't seem the same. Because your face cleared up, my face cleared up. <laughs> My face lit up, your face lit up, and you just don't seem the same. Yeah, kids, another big romantic ballad for you, too. Well, this is my wife's up here at Weird Willie West Show for you today, and wonderful Wednesday, we'll switch over now for our final report from our Hollywood newsman, Sidney Zugsmith, in glamorous Hollywood. Take it away, Sid, baby. Thank you very much, and good evening, premier lovers, and here we are at Grumman's Chinese Restaurant in glamorous Hollywood, where we're covering the exciting world premiere of the science fiction movie, The Horrible Blob, that succeeded in eating the world without even trying. Those screams you just heard us for the star of the show, Rock Brando. I'll see if I can get him over here in a minute. Rock! Rock, baby! Rock! <laughs> Absolutely beautiful, baby. I love it, Daddy. And listen, I see you're wearing your famous makeup from the picture. What makeup? This is me. <laughs> I look this way. It was quite a talent hunt for the lead, but please don't touch my tentacles. I'm a star. <laughs> listen, I didn't realize I didn't realize you were a genuine monster. Just where did they find you? They found me in a drugstore, <laughs> right over there, wearing a very tight sweater. And they capped my teeth, and here I am. <laughs> Hey, listen, this, yes. this picture certainly will make you... Certainly. Well, let me say my line, oh. will you? <laughs> this picture certainly will make you a big star. Just what are your plans, big star? Oh, my plans will remain a big star and keep my teeth in at the same time. <laughs> well, I tell you, when I leave you, I'm opening in Las Vegas at a very sweet, <laughs> very, very, very lounge. And then I'm going into... I get $50,000 a week and all the people I can eat. Yes, and oh. new teeth. And new teeth, yes, yes. I've been using that stuff that you've been advertising. Oh, I, <laughs> I hope they don't cut that out. Don't. Listen, I hear you're going to have the lead in the new dramatic play by Arthur Miller. Is that what you heard? That's right. I'm a very serious actor. I don't want to be just another pretty face. <laughs> no. Oh, thank you, Rock. Yes. I hope I hope the critics like your picture, you know? <laughs> they better. Oh. <laughs> A swell monster. And now, back to wonderful Willie West. Take it away, Willie. Welcome, friends, to the Rock Brando Show. Boy, that Willie West was delicious. <laughs> Mama, just keep sending those people in, folks, will you? <laughs> wonderful dinner. Last week on the show, I sang my first solo, and because of the mail we've received, Buddy Greco is going to do all the singing on the show tonight. I'm all smiles, darling. You'd be too. If you knew, darling, all of the smiles were for you. I'm all chills, darling, through and through. My cold hands, darling, warm to the touch of you. Rain hasn't fallen for days now, but rainbows are filling the sky. Painted those rainbows shining before my eyes. Can't you tell that I'm in love, darling, deep and true? With, yes, who, darling, someone I 
die for, beg still alive for, eat humble pie for, someone to fly to the sun, moon and sky for, someone to live for, to laugh with and cry for, and that someone is you. Take a little walk with me right down the street. Take a little bus and I'll get you a seat. Make a little stop and we'll walk up the block. And keep walking till we reach the dock. Take a little boat and we won't make a fuss. Take a little captain and he'll marry us. Make a little landing, we'll get off in Spain. Take an umbrella in case it may rain. And life will be easy. Life will be free. Love will be breezy. Cause no one is closer than you are to me. Take a little plane and we'll go home and then. Take a little cab to our sweet little den. Take a little bus, take a little plane, take a little boat, take a little cab, take a little time and when I count to ten. Take a little walk and we'll start once again. I like to feel fancy free, I like to live young, I like the old merry-go-round. I like to play lover, I don't like to get stung, I like my two feet on the ground. I may date a girl nightly and kiss her politely, but will she get under my skin? Well, my friends, it all depends on the mood I'm in. I like to hear opera or I like to rejoice. I'm not the predictable kind. Whatever the option is, whatever the choice, I like to make up my own mind. If the choice were to break up or kiss her and make up, I'd try not to lead with my chin. But my friend, it all depends on the mood I'm in. I may change, who can tell? I may suffer the pangs of remorse. I may change, need the spell of that old irresistible force. Now I'm on the road single, oh, don't look behind me. Caught in that marital spin. Yet someday I may sight one who looks like the right one and walks down the aisle with chagrin. You see, my disbelieving friends, it all depends on the mood I'm in. Hey! George and I thought we'd let you in on a uh, very little Hollywood secret. That's right. I know a lot of you people think that uh, Hollywood people, after hours, why they're out all night with wild parties and all of that. No, that's wrong. They stay home and they barbecue. <coughs> they wouldn't go to a loving if Elizabeth Taylor was there. So when Buddy Rich and the band was packing them in every night at the Shea in Hollywood, you got to know that he was hot, at least hotter than Elizabeth Taylor was at that time. That's right. You know, Buddy's big number uh, was West Side Story. Well, and I think it might be better just to let him play it rather than to talk about it. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, the big band of Buddy Rich. And the Miriam Nelson Band.
tuned for the second half of Away We Go. Hello, operator. Give me the CIA. It's an emergency. It's an urgent emergency. I got vital information that concerns the safety of the nation. Yes, I've looked in the front of the phone book. No, I can't tell the fire department. <laughs> of course I trust the fire department. But it's top secret. Never mind. Just get me information, will you? Hello, information. I want the telephone number to CIA. What city? How do I know? It's a secret organization. <laughs> Try this city. I don't want to make a toll call. <laughs> no, I don't know the address. It's the CIA. How do you spell it? <laughs> CIA. C is in Charlie. I is in Irving. A, A is in Aardvark. That's it. CIA. And please hurry, will you? Bunch of them hippies having a commie love in over here. <laughs> huh? You got a Charlie Irving Aardvark on Burnside Avenue? <laughs> That's not it, operator. Look, this is terribly important to all of us now. Come on, reach. I got to reach the CIA. It's very imperative. Without delay. No, I'm not a spy. If I was a spy, I'd have the number. <laughs> Don't try Beverly Hills. It'll be unlisted there. Ah, <laughs> oh, you got it. CIA. The Contain Iceland Association. <laughs> No, that ain't it. Chicken Institute of America? <coughs> Custer Indian Avengers? <laughs> I don't think it's any of that bunch. No, operated it's CIA. It's a government agency. Look under the yellow pages. Try it under uh, colleges and labor unions. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hey, there's something wrong. Hey, fella, I'm using this line. Oh, oh, the CIA. <laughs> oh, how are you? Sure. Well, thank goodness you were bugging my line. Yeah. <laughs> Excedrin headache number 81, the tourist. Two of the brightest young men on the comedy scene today are Patchett and Tarsus, former members of the advertising profession. Their routines are fresh and funny and topical, and it does give me great pleasure to introduce them to you, Patchett and Tarsus. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening. I'm Tom Patchett. And I'm Jay Tarsus. Yes, he is. And for those of you who don't already know, Mr. Tarsus is one of America's foremost young authors. Among other things, he's written the shortest book in the world, Congenial Mississippi Sheriffs. <laughs> Mr. Tarsus, it's nice to have you with us this evening. Yes, it is. I understand, I understand that you have a new book in the works. Yes. What's the nature of this book? This is a medical biography. And what's the title? It's called De Gaulle, The Man and De Bladder. <laughs> We're the uh, comedy team. <laughs> Patchett and Tarsus, and now that we've gained your complete acceptance, we'd like to get things rolling by slowing down just a little bit, and we'd like to do something for you that you might well expect we would do. Impressions. Every entertainer these days is doing impressions, and far be it from us not to have some ready for you. Yeah, far be it, you know. Right. So as a matter of fact, we'd like to go directly into our world-famous, very difficult 26 impressions in a row. Now, the material for these 26 impressions has been extracted from some of the most famous movies ever to come out of Hollywood. These are movie impressions. The... <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Okay. Now, the movies we'll be impressing from are, in order, Gone with the Wind, My Fair Lady, The Ten Commandments, Ben-Hur, The Hustler, Gigi, On the Waterfront, Bridge Over the River Kwai, Lawrence of Arabia, Carousel, The Longest Day, The Victors, Giant, Sands of Iwo Jima, Citizen Kane, Captain's Courageous, Boys Town, all the King's Men, Born Yesterday, High Noon, Scudder Who's Scudder Hay. Those are hip. Bad Seed, Bad Bascom, Bad Dad, Black Rock, Bad and the Beautiful, and Birdman of Alcatraz. Right. <laughs> now, those are the movies, and here are the impressions. Hey, Atlanta's on fire. You want to buy some flowers? Move those chariots. Open up that seat. Eight ball in a side pocket. Don't get Charlie, Charlie. March. Oh, it's June hot. is busting out all France, of France, we're landing in France. Nuts. It's a big land. It's a proud Saddle land. Up. Rose so this is Kansas. It's a lot Mr. of water. Chairman. Come here. Whoa. Hot, bad, bad, bad. Hot. Sure. There you are. Ladies. 
Thank you very, very much. much. The, uh, the miraculous thing about that is, is that that's just a small sample of the carnival-like atmosphere we're capable of generating. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, but we're at our best when we're fooling around with satire. Right, satire is the main thing that sets us apart from a juggling act. You know? <laughs> As George Carlin mentioned when he introduced us, uh, we relinquished our distinguished careers in advertising. Fired, to, uh, I think. Fired is a much better word. Yeah, uh, at any rate, we were forced into show business, and the rest of the story of Patchett and Tarsus is, of course, legend. Yeah. But having been in advertising, we're immune to most types of commercials. But there's one type of ad that we still have yet to get over, and that's the automobile dealer who does his own commercials on the all-night movies. <laughs> Hello out there, all you new car buyers and soft cell fans. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying tonight's all-night movie. It's called Sitting in a Chair. It stars Arlene Whalen and Mr. Joe McCrea. And it's brought, it's brought to you tonight and every night by the gang at Calvin Fee Bash Studebeel. It's the largest Studebeel dealer in this area. Fee Bash will save you cash. By the way, I'm Calvin Fee Bash. <laughs> Well, I don't want to hog the spotlight. Oh, no, not me. I've asked one of our personable salesmen making his first appearance on television tonight, Mr. Lee Nelheim, to come up to the studio and talk to us tonight. Now, Lee is always eager and ready to serve you, right, Lee? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Lee, why don't you get things rolling by flashing our audience that famous V-Bash Studeville smile. <laughs> That's the same infected smile that he's been flashing for us at Fee Bash for how long now, Lee? Uh, I don't know, Calvin. Seems like a century. Well, I'll tell you exactly how long it's been. It's been 26 warm, wonderful years. I'll tell you that right to years. your face. Yeah, yeah, and Lee, let's tell the folks a little something about yourself. Okay. How did you come to work for Fee Bash Studebeel in the first place? Well, on a bus. <laughs> you know, I didn't have my own car right, in no, 1941. You, you started out with us as a young salesman, and through hard work, you became what, Lee? I became an old salesman. <laughs> Well, oh, that's the uh, voice of experience talking to you folks. And Lee, strictly off the cuff now and in your own words, why don't you tell the folks a little bit about those brand new, spanking new, 1967 Studebills we have in our showroom for this year. Well, they're really good cars, Calvin. They get good mileage. They steer okay. <laughs> Most of the motors are still holding up. <laughs> Well, they're the talk of the town, folks. And, Lee, what about those different makes and models of Studebeels that we carry now? Which ones do you like best? Oh, the green ones, Calvin. <laughs> the green ones are good, Lee, but... The red I... ones stink. Yeah, well, I was... <laughs> what about the different makes and models of Studebeels that we carry? Oh. I was referring to the Loomis, the Lena, the Letman, the Lane, and the brand-new 1967 Studebeels Studolero. And, Lee, yeah. what about veterans? They're very courageous. <laughs> Is the devil, yeah, you know, I, well, I was thinking. Right. I was thinking more about the big 25% discount that we offer oh. to all our veteran friends out there in Lee. Yeah. Tell our veteran friends out there all they have to do in order to qualify for that big fee bash 25% discount. Well, you have to show us your driver's license and cross your heart and hope to die you're a veteran. <laughs> we'll sell you a car. We don't care. <laughs> Lee, what other groups besides veterans, what other groups besides veterans can qualify for the big fee batch 25% discount? Uh, Non-veterans. <laughs> Non-veterans and Christians. Oh. Ladies, too. All right. Let's, let's get back to our all-night movie now. It's brought to you tonight and every night by the gang act. Uh, Calvin Feebash Studebeel. Feebash, save your cash. Come on down. Come on down. Yeah, come on down to Calvin Feebash Studebeel. Located at... 167342 Peter Bruegel Boulevard in Montmorency. Or call us at... 930. Telephone number. Get the telephone number. 86 Locust something. Right. Right. And when you do come down to see us at Fee Bash in person, no matter what you do, be sure to ask, especially for a car. <laughs> And bananas you can pick right off a tree. We got volleyball and ping pong and a lot of dandy games. What ain't we got? We ain't got games. We get packages from home, we get movies, we got shows, we get speeches from our skipper and advice from Tokyo Road. We get letters, doused with perfume, we get dizzy from the smell. What don't we get? You know darn well. We got nothing to put on a clean white suit for. 
what we need, we ain't no substitute for. There ain't nothing like a date, nothing in the world. There is nothing you can name that is anything like a dame. Ah, there's nothing like a dame, I know. I tried going out with other things. <laughs> but it didn't work. You know, I'll never forget my first date. Black, wavy hair, great body, exciting personality, a luscious smile. And the girl wasn't too bad either. <laughs> no, she was gorgeous, really. She would have won the Miss America contest hands down. But she kind of walked funny, hands down. <laughs> Wild chick. You know, in those days, I used to run around with Sinatra a little bit, and uh, Frank and I would chase after the girls, and he got most of them anyway. He was a lousy lover, but a great runner. <laughs> to, oh, yes. I had a girl for every day in the week. Eight girls a week is a lot. And as you can see, I had no time for school. When I was dating, I didn't have a car. We were too poor. So when I went out with a girl, I kind of borrowed my father's hubcaps. <laughs> but I didn't care. Until I was 25, I only went out with blondes in those days. I really had a lot of fun. But of all the dames I ever met, I ever went with, there was only one. I'll never forget Sylvia. She owes me money. <laughs> She's the best-looking bookie in South Philadelphia. <laughs> Long for the fair and gentle sex We would like to feel a feeling of some arms around our necks We feel hungry as a wolf at when he been Red Riding Hood What don't we feel? We don't feel good Lots of things in life are beautiful, but <laughs> There is one particular thing that is nothing whatsoever in any way, shape, or form like any <laughs> I never did too well with girls myself. I was kind of shy. I thought I wasn't worthy of a girl. Maybe it was because I didn't have a profession like other guys, engineer, doctor. I was an Aerosmith. <laughs> when it came to girls, I guess I've been shy since I was about 16. So, including now, I must be shy about 200 girls. <laughs> I really wasn't like the other fellas in my neighborhood. They would call a girl on the phone. They'd talk to her for hours. I'd sit and wait for a girl to call me. And one day, my father said, George, nobody's gonna call. We don't have a phone, boy. I didn't go with girls. I spent most of my time in the movies. Saw King Kong 25 times. It's because I was in love with Fay Ray. I was looking for a girl I could hold in one hand. When it comes to women, I have kind of bad luck. I was the only guy on the block who got mononucleosis without kissing anyone. They used to kick sand in my face. We lived eight miles from the beach. I'm not just a ladies' man. In fact, my mother wouldn't even kiss me goodnight unless I took her to dinner and a show. But then I guess they don't make girls like they used to. Their mystery's gone. The girls are topless today. They wear miniskirts. You can almost guess the ending. <laughs> there is nothing in the world. Nothing in the world. There is nothing you can name that is anything like a dame. Dames. You know what a dame is? That's the girl you run around with until you get married. And then you stop seeing her because she's your wife. <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I kissed a girl. She had buck teeth. After that first kiss, I had a nose job. When I was 16, I fell in love. Her name was Cynthia. She was very beautiful, but she had a certain something. I think it was a rich father. We used to go everywhere together. Movies, parties, dances. But I never kissed her goodnight. I figured, why spoil a good thing, right? Her skin gave me the idea of being a drummer. Dames are funny. Think about that. Dames are funny, especially the kind I get. Weep. I'll never forget. I'll never forget my first date. It was in a Chinese restaurant, and the cookie I was with ate like I had a fortune. <laughs> oh, I was quite a wolf in those days, folks. And it wasn't, I wasn't half as attractive then as I am now. <laughs> you may laugh anytime you wish. I used to make three or four dates in one evening. 
The psychiatrist told me it was because I was insecure. Can you imagine the traffic if I was secure? <laughs> but the big love of my life was Mildred. Mildred used to wear tight sweaters to school. I was very good in arithmetic. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> and then there was the never-to-be-forgotten Laura. Laura was like Jane Mansfield, Elizabeth Taylor, and Sophia Loren all rolled into one. I never could figure out how she drowned. <laughs> women whenever I can. <laughs> there are no books like a day. And nothing looks like a day. There are no drinks like a day. And nothing thinks like a day. And nothing acts like a day. Or attracts like a day. There ain't a thing that's wrong with any man here that can't be cured by floating in here. A girly, womanly, female, feminine. There ain't nothing like a dame. What a da 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 da. Why? Away We Go has been brought to you by New Denture Cream, the special denture...